Hey guys, so today I'm going to measure the rod journals or crank pins on the crankshaft from the Subaru and I'm going to measure the connecting rods themselves to see what kind of damage happened from the rod bearing going bad. If you want to do this yourself, you're going to need a dial caliper. I'm old school and I didn't want the digital kind so I got this one. I got it off of Amazon, I'll put a link to it below. It's not professional grade but it seems to be of decent quality and had lots of good reviews. I started off by measuring the bad connecting rod. I measured the inside diameter in several locations. In the horizontal diameter, the dimensions were pretty close together. I think this B measurement was a little fluke. I should have tried it again just to make sure. But the vertical dimensions were way off. If you take the difference between the vertical and the horizontal measurements, it's 0.47 millimeters difference. That's 18 thousandths of an inch. It might not seem like a lot, so let's take a look at the number four connecting rod. I needed to remove the rod from the crankshaft and take a look at how easy the end cap came off the number four rod. If you didn't see the other video, number one was so warped from heat, I needed to hammer it off the crankshaft. I did the same kind of measuring on this rod and got these numbers. The difference between the largest and smallest is only 0 0.08 millimeters. That's three thousandths of an inch. The other thing I measured were the crank pins for the number one and number four connecting rods on the crankshaft. These cranks have 52 millimeter connecting rod journals. Factory specs say they need to be between 51.984 and 52 millimeters. That's a pretty tight tolerance. The number 4 journal was right at 52, but the number 1 journal was at 51.86. That's more than a tenth of a millimeter beyond the allowable measurement of 51.984. So that brings me to the final verdict. I spoke with two machine shops around town, one of which actually saw the crank and the connecting rod. The other one I explained the situation. They both said it wasn't worth repairing what I had. One shop told me, even if I got a new crankshaft, they would still need to line bore the block to make sure everything fit properly. And on a Subaru block, because of their split design, this involves up to 8 hours of setting up their machine at $90 per hour, for a rough estimate of $700, plus new bearings and rods, and we're already at $1,000. So that means we're looking for a new engine. Thanks for watching guys, and stay tuned for more videos.